Yo, yo, yo. Hey, welcome back to giving out free game. There will be some game giving. You just got to apply the game and catch this game and apply this game if this game is good for your life. There will be some game giving. You just got to catch it. You know what I'm saying? And if it's some good game, you might want to use it in your life because it will make your life a little better. It's free. Just pay attention. And I got one of my good friends on here today, man. Y'all been seeing him. A lot of people know about him. He been around. He been doing his thing in Memphis for years. My guy, Brink TV. Brink Young, man. What I do, Brink? South Memphis. What's going on with you, Brink? What's going on, family? My bad. I ain't seen you. Oh, you good. You, you good. You me, good. Man. I got to throw up this South Memphis like a mug, man. I just want to show love to the part of the city. Oh, yeah, fuck. man. But, man, Z Dog, how you doing, fam? Man, I've been good, man. I've been good. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been uh, recreating myself for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Trying to add different seasons and different mm -hmm. sauce to my plate every year. You know what I'm saying? I'm always, I'm always doing something different. Oh, you man. already know. You've you, you, you been bringing the flavor for a long time. Time, yeah, man. man. I'm, I'm thankful to be on your platform. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate and it. I appreciate I'm just it. glad to be here to give the people some game, give them some free game. Oh, yeah, because we're going to give them a little game out here today. We're going to yeah. give them a little game, man. What, 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 what part of town did you bring from? What, you, what part of town are you from, Brandon? Hey, man, one of my favorite parts of Memphis, South Memphis. Like I say, uh, if mm -hmm. I can be a little bit more specific, mm -hmm. right by where Southside used to be at, you know, right, right by Pine Hill, Community Sound. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up on the same street with Key Glock, believe it. Not. Say that, say yeah, that. So I watched Key Glock grow up. Mm -hmm. You know me, I know him, I know his folks, they know me, you know. Yeah. It's no I know his folks, they know my folks. So like it's 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 beautiful growing up from where I'm from, man. Like I learned so much, I seen so much, been exposed to a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh I feel like it, it kinda part of what made me who I am today. Say that man, because since you said you've been knowing Key, Key Glock mm -hmm. 17 years ago, you was a rapper. Yeah, them Hey man, I saw you out here uh performing. <laughs> I was like, damn, Brink was rapping, man. Yeah, he did. Seventeen years work. ago, man. You feel me, man? <laughs> and I, I was work. uh I was like, damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. You man. know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah. Then you had a song out here, man, called uh Girl, make that money. Girl, make that money. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, it was a strip club song, man. And it's crazy. I created this mm -hmm. song before I was even old enough to really be in the strip club. Right, right, right. But I remember hearing. How uh, old was you? Because you looked the kind of look like. I was super young, bro. I was probably like about mm, 19. About oh, okay, 19, okay, 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 okay. About okay. 19 or 20 around that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I say this, like, I remember hearing. Mike Jones. This back when Mike Jones yeah. was super hot, super Right, popular. right. Mike Jones was like. How he got popping was he made a song for the girls in the strip club. Right. And he said, I can make a song with your name in it and you can dance to it. Right, right. And I kind of took that and adapted it a little bit. So I made a song called Girl Make That Money. Mm -hmm. And it kind of had a little dance to it. This right. was around the time Soldier Boy just came out with it. Yeah, I saw you. I saw you uh, doing this. Yeah, yeah, I saw the dance. I saw, I, saw, I look at the old brick, man. Yeah, he uh, yeah, doing yeah, a Soldier Boy and everything. That was at, actually at Brinson's. Right. So it, I, it was at Brinson's, yes. Artists that's doing their thing at Brinson's now, bro. I did that 17 so years, years ago. ago. 17, yeah. 18 years ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the girls, they were in the, and if you watch that video, you see the girls, they were doing that mm -hmm. time too. Yeah, like, yeah. It, that's what I was, that's how I came into the industry. Like, yeah. I started out as an artist, you know. Mm -hmm. I was rapping at probably like age 14, you know say what I'm saying? I was making my own beats and everything. So, say that. Matter of fact, I had, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a senior in high school, mm -hmm. I had Zedzilla on my first CD. That right. was my first, like, big feature. Right. Oh, that's the business, Zilla. bro. Yeah, yeah. That was 04. Like, yeah. I had Zilla on the song. Yep. Say so, that, man. Say that, man. Y'all can find it nowhere, but it, it exists. We're going we gonna to try to find it. Yeah. We're going to try to find it, man. For real, for real, man. Bring TV, man. You've been out here for a minute, man. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, what, was the, what was your first show you did that really made Bring TV, like, uh, really made you like, man, you know, I, I, I'm going to do this? Okay. Um, You know, probably, and, and I hate to, mm -hmm. I hate to, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say a few different shows. I don't want. Okay, to I mean, let me say right. something right quick before you yeah. get your first shows you did. They were kind of different. Mm -hmm. They wasn't like you like now. Absolutely. I saw you doing like photo shoots. You had people on there singing. Yeah. The quality wasn't good. True. I couldn't hardly True. see them, but you were still doing that. You were putting right. that work in. Man, that that, that was, but that where really stood out. You was, was putting that work in, no matter how it looked yeah. or sounded. Mm -hmm. You were still working. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Yeah, that was that was before technology got a little bit. Yeah, better. yeah, yeah. I think back then, man, camera quality was like uh, Shit. cell phone quality. Yes, like, yes, it was, yes, it was, yes. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. But back in those early days of YouTube, man, it was gold. I yeah, say. it was. It, yeah, it, it, it kind of helped me get my. My, my ass in as far as like making money off YouTube. Like I got mm -hmm. my first YouTube check in 2010. Right, right. And I was 
educating others on how to get mm -hmm. money on YouTube. Because back Man. then, it wasn't hard. I mean, it's not hard now, but back then, like, they didn't mm -hmm. have the rules and restrictions and regulations. Like, right. you had like now, you, yeah, you do watch time, time for this. Yeah, it exactly, wasn't about man. that back then. It's like, if your video popping, you can get a check. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, yeah, man, like, the show, like, Bring TV really evolved a lot, like, um, from quality to, like, the quality of the interviews. Like, mm -hmm. everything just improved over time. Mm -hmm. You know, I studied so many people, like, coming in the game. Like, I right. studied people like Arsenio Hall, mm -hmm. um, Tavish Smiley. I studied people like um, Howard Cosell. Right. Like, their interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, Terrence J from 106 and Park, I studied him. Mm -hmm. Um it's just it was just growing, but you say which interview I you know that kind of made me say, bro, this young really. Mm -hmm. I would probably say that first Zedzilla interview I did mm -hmm. back in the day. That that was one that pretty much kind of helped solidify what right. I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, my first actual Brink TV interview, uh, I had a homie. Shout out to my guy Measy Matt. Mm -hmm. He was locked up at the time, and I was writing him while he was in prison. Right. And I told him, I said, man, I got this video blog show mm -hmm. I'm doing called Bring TV. Right. Once you get out of jail, I can interview you, mm -hmm. you know, and talk about yeah, what it yeah, was like yeah. in prison. And I did, and that was my very first interview. And then mm -hmm. eventually I started, like, charging for it. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, I can make some money off of this. Mm -hmm. And I started, like you say, I had photo shoots, man. The models, believe it or not, them models, that was turning my page up mm -hmm. like crazy. Like Yeah, I saw that. I saw you had a lot of models. You were doing like photo shoots mm -hmm. and they were talking about certain mm -hmm. things on there and stuff mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So, it, like I say, it, it kind of was a variety show. It was really a hodgepodge. It was just whatever. You were just finding yourself. Day. You know, exactly. just, just adding all type of, type of mm -hmm. stuff to it to get you popping. That's what, right. you got, that's what people got to right. do out here. Yeah. yeah. And, and eventually, I kind of found my lane. And, mm -hmm. man, we've been doing it ever since. So I yeah. saw that you said uh, uh, David Banner was your... No, uh, favorite, mm -hmm. favorite uh, show that you did. Yeah, favorite interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. To this day, man, that David, that David Banner interview is my favorite because, like, I think back to that day where mm -hmm. I was at my back when I was working the day job. Or right, right. I remember practicing that interview all mm -hmm. day, and I was so nervous about it because I was a big fan. I'm still a big fan of David right, 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 right. But I was such a tremendous fan of David Banner, and I was like, bro. Like, I got to knock this out. To me, that was a big, gigantic interview. So I right. was like, you got to knock out all your questions. You got to ask it. You know, like, it's got to be perfect. Right, right. And so the nerves were there. And when I finally got there and did the interview, like, it mm -hmm. was hot in there. Like, it was so many people around. I forgot my tripod. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like everything that would make this interview not work. Mm -hmm. You know, even the people on the red carpet. Because it was right. supposed to be like a red carpet type thing at right. the event. And... They was like, okay, hurry up. They were trying to wrap me up and everything. Mm -hmm. David Allen was like, nah. Let me get it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And he right. did that for me. He didn't do that for the others. He did mm -hmm. that for me. So that was most meaningful to me, man, for him to really take his time mm -hmm. and thoroughly answer my questions and just give me the best interview I ever had, in my opinion. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. What artists, what artists, what Memphis artists did you come up listening to back in the days, man? Man, I'm going to be honest, man. Like, I, I learned some stuff from my older brothers. Because, see, I'm the mm -hmm. baby. So, certain things I didn't catch. Mm -hmm. You know, some things I caught when I got older. Mm -hmm. But, man, I remember being in first grade saying, it's the skinny, skinny, skinny. Yeah, baby. man. Like, like, I thought I was skinny because <laughs> I was skinny. And I was like, bro, that's and you hit the And you hit the perm, too. Not, not when I was a kid. <laughs> they kind of they they a little Yeah, late. yeah. Y'all can see them photos. They yeah, still yeah. And he was, he, he, was, he was down there, man. Money he Mike. was, he was yeah, he <laughs> hurt along, too. That's what they called me. Mm, yeah. Money Mike, Cat Williams. But uh, anyway, shout out to Cat Williams. But definitely Skinny Pimp. Mm -hmm. Um. Triple Six Mafia, like right, it was right. Three Six Mafia when I was, it was, triple, it was six, triple Six, exactly. six Mafia. Mm -hmm. Um, probably about '98, I started catching on to like Player Fly. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, Gangsta Black, obviously. Um, my Tom Ski Mask, like, yeah. like that was the stuff that he I was, was popping kinda, back then. I was kind of privy to, you know, as a kid. Like I say, a lot of the underground, underground stuff, mm -hmm. I didn't really catch it because I was a kid. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, but, right, right. The stuff that was kind of buzzing and, like I said, the taste yeah. that my big brothers had, mm -hmm. I was on it. You know, I exactly, was checking yeah. it out. But definitely Skinny Pimp, mm -hmm. uh, Triple Six Mafia, and, you know, Player Fly. About 9-8, I was on Player Fly. Say that, man. Say yeah. that. Hey, I appreciate you having me on your show. I know I came on your show, man. No uh, doubt. I think it was last year. I think, no, probably two years ago, couple probably. Years back, yeah, a couple man. years ago. Man, I appreciate you having me on there. We chopped it up, man. No doubt. I, I, I was on there uh, talking about a lot of things. And, 
I, I just look back at it and see all the things we was talking about. Mm-hmm. I have done did. Yeah, you yeah, know, everything yeah. I said I was gonna do, I it, 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 I did it. Yeah. And yeah. that's one thing I like to tell people too. Uh, do the things you say you're gonna do. Thanks. You know, Thanks. really do it, man. To yeah. go all the way out with it. Do go finish it. Mm-hmm. Don't just start and finish it, man. You know, I I told him I'm gonna do this game show, and I'm mm-hmm. out here been doing it. Right. I was just on news. I said I'm gonna do this podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I I start doing it, man. That's what I'm saying. Really do it, man. For real, yeah. man. Ain't nothing wrong with trying them ideas out and never be scared to fail. Mm-hmm. I don't fail plenty of times, and I got right back up and did it again. You and know? that game show is dope, man. Like I've yeah. seen several videos of it, mm-hmm. man. I'm definitely rocking with it, and it's crazy the. The, the answers that I be thinking the mm-hmm. people don't get, they don't get. I be like, bro, for <laughs> real? You yeah. Know? Like, I remember seeing you outside of, out front of uh, uh, FedEx Forum one right. time, and I'm just knowing these youngsters, they go get it, mm-hmm. and they be not. And I'm like, bro, come You on. know what it is, man? They be knowing, right? It's mm-hmm. just, I catch them off guard. Right, right. I catch them off guard with the they, they 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 go brain dead. Yeah. They go brain dead right there. Cause I mm-hmm. know I said I know they know. Yeah. But soon I ask them that question, yeah. oh man, oh man. Yeah. And they just they just forget it. Mm-hmm. And then they get off camera, you know I knew that one, man. They go brain dead. Yeah. It happens so much. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. I ask people who's the president on the five dollar bill. Yeah. It, they just go brain dead. Some of these questions be easy. Yeah. But you know, I tell them people, uh, these questions, you don't supposed to know them because it's called bet you don't know. Bet you don't know. It's, you, I, I bet you don't know these things, but if you do, I'm going to reward you, man. For real, for real. Yeah. Hey, I saw you had moved to the ATL. Did you move to the ATL or did you just go up there to work? Nah, I moved. I actually moved. But you, like, you came I, back. You was like. <laughs> that's the thing. I kept I kept everything here. Yeah. Like, basically, if I could kind of give y'all a good understanding. Yeah, what happened when you went to the ATL? All right, so. I, I was living in an apartment in Memphis, and I mm-hmm. got a studio in Memphis. Right. I decided I wanted to move and just try to better and, you know, access mm-hmm. more opportunity. Right. So I did, mm-hmm. except I didn't move like the traditional people move, where mm-hmm. they pack up everything and go. Right. I said, no, mm-hmm. I'm leaving my stuff here. Mm-hmm. I'm taking my equipment, and I'm going to go get an apartment in Atlanta and right. find a studio to rent in Atlanta. Right. And I did. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I'm gonna say this, like within the first 30 days of me living there, mm-hmm. things start to excel and take off like crazy. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't used to it. Mm-hmm. And things were going well. I made a lot of good contacts and mm-hmm. I just kind of kept. But one thing I'm gonna say this though, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into because I, I had an apartment downtown and mm-hmm. I, they was knocking my socks off with the rent. Goddamn right. I'm talking about 2600 a month. It ain't Memphis. <laughs> I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, yeah. oh, shit, I'm brand Well, you probably should have, you probably should have known that it's going to be a little higher than Memphis. I, did, I knew it was going to be higher, but mm-hmm. I didn't know it was going to be that much higher. Right, the right. I had in, in uh, East Memphis, it mm-hmm. was way cheaper than that. Oh, did, man, I Memphis, mean, yeah, times man. Than yeah. That. So I I stayed there for a little while and I said, you know what? Let me find something a little cheaper outside mm-hmm. of Atlanta. Right. Found something in uh, a little spot called Ellenwood, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, y'all probably heard um, Crime Mob mm-hmm. talking about that. That's where they from. Right, 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 right. Next to Decatur or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Found me a spot a little bit cheaper mm-hmm. and I was with that. I rolled with that. Mm-hmm. So, in all honesty, man, in Atlanta, I was just working. Mm-hmm. That's all I did. I didn't go out and hang. I didn't so when you say you were working, you were just doing interviews and stuff and That's all that. I, yeah. well, I did interviews and went home. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, I, didn't, that. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get into the nightlife. I wasn't even dating in Atlanta. I mm-hmm. didn't go on not one date while I lived in Atlanta. Right. Because I wasn't there for it. You was focused, man. I had yeah. a mission, and mm-hmm. I stuck to the mission. I did my work, and mm-hmm. then I went home. Mm-hmm. I lived the most boring life the whole time I was there, mm-hmm. and then when I come back and visit Memphis. It was like more of a breath of, breath of fresh air because I feel like I can get out here and move more because right. I know the scammers in Memphis. Right. I don't know the scammers in Atlanta. Right. And I don't have no intention to learn. When I, when I saw that you said you was moving to the ATL, I felt like that was a good move. I said, Brink is yeah. broad his horizon mm-hmm. because he have t- he have talked to everybody in Memphis. Yeah. When he go to the ATL, everybody's going to the ATL. Mm-hmm. He's, he's going to do more interviews and great Interviews. I felt like it was a good move, yeah. and then I said, "Damn, he back!" Yeah. I didn't, I like, "Damn, he back!" I thought he was just, you no. Know, I saw you doing interview. I just thought mm-hmm. you was just back, just doing right. interview. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but nah, I saw you was here, here. Nah, what, what, what made me come back? Like I say, doing that for so, so much time, mm-hmm. you paying bills in two different cities, right? Eventually, man, 
you either go be homeless or mm-hmm. something's got to go. Some got some. I was so, say some of them got to go. Yeah. You know, and not to say that I wasn't making the money. I was mm-hmm. making the money, but at some point I had to be real with myself, man. I asked myself, I was like, "You're making the money now. Mm-hmm. What if things get slow? What if right. things slow down? What if you go through a period?" And I had an incredible savings account, so that mm-hmm. was like my file black right. file back plan. But I asked myself, like, what are you going to do if things get slow or maybe if another pandemic comes mm-hmm. and this and that? Bro, I didn't own nothing but that car. Mm-hmm. I was living in two apartments, basically. Mm-hmm. I had no ownership. So I decided to come back to Memphis and buy a house. Mm-hmm. Well, why you buy a house in Atlanta? Do you know what house is cost in Atlanta? Yeah, it costs, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you, so you, it's drop, like, you drop this spot here, and another place is going to be a totally different price. Exactly. So yeah. what I decided to do, and I felt like it was a grown man move, I decided to get rid of the apartment in Atlanta mm-hmm. and come get rid of the apartment in Memphis, come back to Memphis, and buy a house in Memphis. That's did what you, I did. Did you think uh, coming back to Memphis, we mm-hmm. all know how Memphis is. Yeah, yeah. A lot of shit be going on. Do you yeah. think that was a good move since you came back to Memphis, leaving Atlanta? Like, hey, I, let me tell you my story. I moved to Atlanta two years ago, me mm-hmm. and my partner. We, I moved to Atlanta. I took $1,500, and I moved to Atlanta. I went and got me a job there. And I, I, I ended up coming back to Memphis four months later. And I was like, damn, I should have stayed. Yeah. Do you think, do you think, did you have, do you think like that too? I do you think don't. it was a good? Do you think it was a good idea to leave Atlanta? And, you know, um, I think it was a bad idea to move to Atlanta without owning something. Right. I should have owned a house mm-hmm. because when you own a house, all you got to do is pay property tax. Mm-hmm. I was paying an apartment and I wasn't getting nothing out of it. Right. Just you just renting. Right. So I think it was a bad move for me to not own a house before moving to Atlanta. Because once I own this house, and I don't own the house yet, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, uh, on this mortgage, I feel like I had this mortgage paid off within the next four years. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people, they took them 30 years. Me, yeah, mine, 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 13, 14 years. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm hustling super hard to own this. Mm-hmm. And that's free game right there. Like, own something. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, once you own it, you're free to do whatever yeah, you want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I feel like my mistake was going to Atlanta, not having a house owned already, mm-hmm. and then spending even more money in rent. The money I was spending in rent, man, mm-hmm. that could have went towards a mortgage on the house that I got now. But yeah. I, my mind wasn't there. It was just like, go there, mm-hmm. make it, get on. Well, it don't work like that. Right. It don't. Nobody is finna move to Atlanta and get on in one year. No, Nobody unless you got, unless you got something major, unless you got something, something major, major that these people want, and you or you provide exactly. or something, or something you sell them to something. <laughs> it exactly. don't work like that. It ain't lying, man. Exactly. So I'm not saying that I couldn't have got on, mm-hmm. you know, but in the time that I was there, well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't blow up, right, so to speak, right, because right, that's right. what people expect. Mm-hmm. But I did gain a lot of contacts. I did make some right. good money. I did work with some people that you know that I feel mm-hmm. like was you know worth my time. I yeah. say that, but. Do I regret it? Only thing I regret is going there without owning a house first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, being That's more prepared regret. when you go places, so, man. My goal in the future, once I get this house paid off, man, mm-hmm. I can live wherever I want. Right. It don't right. matter. Because mm-hmm. I'm not paying the bills in two right, cities. Right, like right, right, right. It's yeah, not, man. I can just pay the light bill and mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah. What's the light bill going to be if I'm not there? You know what I'm saying? So Say that, man. That's, that's, that's my only regret. But Atlanta is beautiful. Everything mm-hmm. is expensive. So if anybody's thinking about it, I would do like how you say, move there with somebody like Yeah, yeah. If, like if I was younger, like that would have been the move. And I did I that, and I did them when I was younger. Exactly. I, I was I was like in my twenties. Like like if yeah. I was in my twenties and it was about four of us that mm-hmm. was like had a, a focus grind, yeah. That would have been the move and you probably would have, you know, yeah, that's just, everything yeah, yeah, that's what I, I took me and my kin for uh faded, man. Me, yeah. and him, me and him just left Memphis and went. Yeah. You know. And but they, and they, we was expecting to blow up, right. <laughs> but you know, yeah. things don't work out like that. But you know what's crazy though, man? Like mm-hmm. if 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 we had like more mentors that can kind of tell us, mm-hmm. hey, now nah, I might do it this way or that. Right, right. I think it probably could have saved us from a lot of stuff. But exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. Like I don't have a mentor in mm-hmm. this entertainment industry. Like mm-hmm. I don't have somebody that's already done what I'm doing. Right. And could tell me I don't have that. Person. Mm-hmm. I never had that person. I had to figure all this stuff out by right. myself. Right. So it, it's like now I'm able to tell people who expiring or mm-hmm. getting into this, mm-hmm. I can show them what to do. Right. And I can show them the mistakes that they don't want to make. But right. I never had that coming up. 
So yeah, like you, I, I, I'm feed off what you said earlier. You said when you start mm -hmm. your uh, your show, mm -hmm. you you came up looking like a senior hall or other people. Yeah, I really didn't look at nobody. Yeah. I just really just jumped into this, mm -hmm. and I just started figuring out my mistakes I was doing as yeah. I was doing shows. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just was figuring how to do. Oh, okay, okay. This time, let let the, let the guests talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't let them, then you do this and do a little more research. You know, I started getting better as I go, but like mm -hmm. like I said, I didn't come up watching the person like, hey, let me study this person. Yeah. And, and, you know. Well, and, it's, it's all a part of it, man. It's kind of like, you know, Kobe. Kobe mm -hmm. watched Jordan. Right. He also watched his game footage to right, know right, where right. he messed up, right, but right. he still watched Jordan. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. it's all of that, man. It's about studying and learning how to mm -hmm. get better, you know, because like I say, like, I had to study because, like, it's one thing to have personality and have gift of gab, but mm -hmm. to turn that into journalism, that's right. a whole different animal. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I had to kind of watch people. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I can ask questions, but how do you segue? How do you get into the next question? Right, that's right. why I watch them. Because right, right. I ain't go to school for it. Do you reach out, do you reach out to all your contestants, y'all like your guests, or do guests reach out to you? And do you, just two plus, and do you, uh, come out your pocket to get certain people on your show sometime. All right, so I answer that question first. I've mm -hmm. never paid a guest. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's a it's a win. It's supposed to be a win-win. You're looking for promotion. Mm -hmm. I'm providing promotion. Mm -hmm. So I've never paid like a celebrity or nothing like mm -hmm. that. And it's people out there that do it. If you mm -hmm. do it, hey, that's what you do. You right. know, I'm not going to shit on that or talk bad about that, but mm -hmm. that's just not what I do right now. Right. Um, in the future or in the event, like we mm -hmm. get some crazy big sponsorship and get a lot of big money. Right. And I can afford to give mm -hmm. Lil Wayne 20, 30, 40, 50 grand for an interview. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it because right. that's my dream interview. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, but right now, nah. Uh, now, you said the first question was uh, do I contact the guests or do mm -hmm. they contact me? It's a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like when it comes to the, the, the bigger stars, like mm -hmm. sometimes they might reach out, like mm -hmm. that, not them. Exactly, but their management right. or their PR team or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, they might reach out and say, hey, my client will be in your city mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, wanted to know if you were interested in interviewing right. them. And I'd be like, oh, shit, yeah, dope, set mm -hmm. that up, you know. Okay. Stuff but like you, that. But you charge, do you charge some of those those, uh, those guests? Yeah, because I, I, I know this right here. Mm -hmm. It's a pick and choose world, right? Facts. My, my, my kinfolk can come over my house right now and go mm -hmm. right in my refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Some niggas can't. Yeah. Some true. niggas can come on my show. They ain't gonna have to pay. Some niggas gonna have to pay. Yeah. That's just how this world is. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying yeah. it's a pick and choose world. Yeah. It is, man. On, on a lot of things, man. Well, the best way I can answer that, if I ever ask you for it, then I probably need it at that time. Right. So that's the best way I can put it. Okay. So if, I'm, if I'm hurt, I ain't mm -hmm. gotta let the world know I'm hurt mm -hmm. at that time. But if I if I if I say it, then mm -hmm. I must need it. Say that, say that. So that's the best way I can answer. Say that. Man, I see you be you know you be adding different sauces to your, your plate like I do too. I see you on your uh, your talk your uh, radio station ninety six point three. Yes, sir. You done added that to your your resume now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said okay then, Brink. I see Brink. He he took he doing this now. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to see. Yeah. That's what I like, I like to see people doing. Cause you gonna always see me do that. Hey. I'm gonna always do something different every year. Gotta like damn, he doing that now. Yep. I'm doing yeah. movies. Yeah. I got my two movies right now, Kiki. Mm -hmm. Always, uh, I got the best you don't know. I added, I added the podcast because I was doing the Icon Academy first. Right. I added giving out free game. Mm -hmm. I got a, a cooking show I'm gonna add this year too. Okay. And I'm gonna say it on here. It's called In My Bag, right? Okay. Okay. It's a cooking show. I'm gonna have two contestants in the kitchen yeah. cooking. Okay. And I'm gonna have you one time. I'm gonna have you on there being a, a, a you know a judge, and we are gonna taste the food okay. sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We are gonna judge it. You know what I'm saying? Like but that. I'm gonna start my cooking show this year. It's gonna be, it's gonna be popping, popping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I see you adding different things to your resume too, man. And not to cut you off, man. Mm -hmm. It's just like I, I always say this statement: like evolve or become extinct. It's exactly. Just, yeah. You're evolving. Mm -hmm. You know and. You, you're a person who been, you know, doing your thing for a while. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to evolve. Right. I have to continue to right, evolve. Right, if right. not, we're extinct. Right, right, We're right. the people that nobody mm -hmm. will talk about or check mm -hmm. for no more. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, we doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah. We're supposed to evolve. Yeah, know? even if you have, I have this show. Say if I'm just doing one thing. I'm doing this show. I have to go from interviewing 
me and my niggas and the people I know to interviewing people that's known over the world. That's evolved. Even though I'm just saying, if you're doing one thing in life, you still can evolve doing one thing. Yep. You just got to make sure you upgrade things as you're doing on that show. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Evolve it. So, yeah, like I said, on, on your, your radio show, 96.3, do uh, you be playing a lot of Memphis artists and worldwide artists. Are the artists that, like, play on your station, are they, like, get paid for the streams and sending? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, uh, that, uh, 96.3 is definitely a royalty paying Say that. station. You right. Just, of course, make sure y'all have y'all paperwork together. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure you have all your publishing filled out. Make sure your song is copywritten. Make sure you, uh, got whatever split sheet so that the producer can get Right, make sure your shit sound that. good. Get uh, your shit mixed. Sound scan. Yes, man. That, you know he ain't finna play your shit. He ain't finna play, listen, he ain't finna play your song when he got, shh, after he played Lil Baby. Yeah. He ain't finna play your song yeah. after he played Lil Baby. Your shit got always earning it. Mm. If your shit ain't mixed, man, it don't sound right coming out the Jay Z. Make sure your stuff is mixed, man. Those are facts. For real, get them yes niggas away from around you. Go for ask a nigga that professionally know how music music sound. Facts. Call me. I would tell you if it sound good, <laughs> if it's good enough to send to Brink, man. Yeah, man. Let I would let you know, man, for real. But yeah, speak about that '96. How, how did you end up coming with that? All right, so just so happened, man, the um, general manager of that station, uh, mm-hmm. Tina Tilton. I've been knowing her for years. Shout out to Tina Tilton. I know Tina Tilton, yeah. Yeah, that lady, She she's really been like a big sister to me in mm-hmm. this entertainment industry. Right. Um, like when I say that I really ain't had no mentors, mm-hmm. you know, it's true. But part of it is untrue because Tina, she's been doing this way longer than me. Right. And she's kind of guided me, you right. know, uh, educated me on some things. Like she... Pretty much helped me get Brink TV. Right. Well, I already had Brink TV on Comcast, mm-hmm. but she helped me get a better situation mm-hmm. uh, with Brink TV. And um, like I said, she's been helping me. But just so happened, she's a um, general uh, general manager of ninety six point three FM. Mm-hmm. And I heard about the station, and I kind of just didn't really pay it much much attention because I, you know, at the time I wasn't listening to the radio as right. much. I just kind of live in my own world, live in my own bubble or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And um, when I found out she was affiliated, I was like, hey, yo, Tina, what's happening? You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, worked our relationship out. And, you know, it's been history ever since. Been on the radio since June. I've been on the radio since June of a lot, last year. June 4th. Yeah. yeah. June, yeah June I, was, I was talking to Tina yeah. Tilton last year. And I was, she, was, she was trying to get me to put my uh, show on that broadcast. I didn't do it because I I, I curse a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I let niggas come on here and smoke. Yeah. You know, all that. And I felt like uh it was going to take my show down mm. a little bit. I didn't want to change it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was the only reason I didn't do it. Because Tim Till's a real cool person. Oh, man. yeah. She, she definitely. For real. Bad. Real cool person, One man. Thing for real. I say, though, you know. I don't really do too much cussing on my show, but mm-hmm. my guests do. Right. I just it just make me edit more. Like right. I just I'm, yeah. I'm blanking out a lot of stuff. Like when Crunchy Black was on there recently, like mm-hmm. dying to every other word Crunchy was saying is <laughs> a where I was like, damn, yeah. it's Crunchy, but hey, it's it's must see TV, it's must see radio. Must right. See I just radio. I just let people come on here and be <laughs> themselves. Yeah. You know, we know yeah. we're gonna be just like we barbershop talking. Mm-hmm. You know, we just really chopping it up. Mm-hmm. And I might ask a couple of questions as we talk, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Yes. It's just yes. like that there. What's yeah. next for Brink TV, man? What's next for you? Um, what's next for me, man? Well, I, I'm gonna have to do like I had the countdown. Right. You know, I went ahead and stopped the Brink TV countdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might bring it back later, but I did promise that we're gonna have another Brink uh, Brink TV countdown award. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna do another one of those probably sometime this spring for the mm-hmm. artists that you know were on the countdown or whatever. It's just like I say, it's a give back. But as far as what's next for Brink TV, right? Um, I'm about to get ready and start doing documentaries. Mm-hmm. Um, I've already been contacted to do one recently for my guy Trippy Tribute, so I'm going to be working on that soon. I already talked to Zed Zillow. I'm supposed to be doing his documentary because... he. When, I talked to him about that, too, about yeah. two, two, two uh, like a week ago, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. saw my movie. He was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I got like a gigantic catalog full of footage on Zillow because I mm-hmm. guess I've been knowing dude since 04. Right. I've been working with him for a long time and a lot of the studio sessions mm-hmm. and a lot of different stuff, I was always there. So right. I got a lot of footage on mm-hmm. them. And, you know, we, hopefully we can get working on that. But like I said, I'm just getting into documentaries next. Um, so, yeah. 
Also, getting more into filmmaking. Uh, mm-hmm. I did produce a, a sitcom. Mm-hmm. Uh, was a, we had actually had a situation with uh, CW30 here in Memphis. Ended mm-hmm. up losing that situation due to not being able to fulfill the contract. I didn't mm-hmm. get the show to them in time. Right, right. And we lost it. So, I just went on and threw it on Facebook. I was mm-hmm. like, look. So, it's out there. So, um, it kind of hurt, but I'm, I'm going to get back into filmmaking. Say it, uh, say it. Writing and, you know, just producing. Like, that's that's where my lane is. Like, Have you ever filmed a movie before? Like, not a movie, but just a series. Like I say, a five-episode okay. series. I have, mm-hmm. you know, I produced it. I wrote mm-hmm. it, cast it, produced it. I did everything but act in it because right. I don't want to be in none of my stuff. Like, right, I just right. wanna, I want to produce it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because... I feel like I'd be better behind the camera. Right, right, right. I see stuff that I wouldn't see if I'm on it. That's right, right. Me. I feel you saying that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I never did a movie, but I feel like movies, is, is it's on the radar, it's mm. on the horizon. It's just I want to get back to, like I said, that, that taste of film making mm. is still in my mouth, man. I got to I gotta quench it somehow, man. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what's going to be next, brother. Say that, man. Say that because, uh, like I said, I jumped into the movie. Thing. You saw Kiki? You, ever, you saw the movie? I haven't. I haven't. Like, man, you got to see it, man. It's movie, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I ain't seen that one. Always good, too, man. Both, yeah. both of these movies are amazing, man. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I do now. I yeah. do movies now, man. And, uh, it's getting better and better as I go. You know what I'm saying? As, as I go, I'm talking about the, the quality of the, me writing, me and my guy, Tiny Man, writing is yeah, getting yeah. better. Tiny, all, all that is getting better, man. You know, I, I feel like everybody, everybody's getting to movies, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Just to make sure when y'all do these movies, man, uh, man, make sure it's rolled out right. Facts. And okay. make sure your shit look good. Yeah, Don't yeah. be just trying to throw shit out there, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Facts. For real, for real. You know, because people want to, everybody got a story, you know? I, I had the hip Memphis hip hop series. I had like 10 episodes. I was doing, I was showing on Facebook and Instagram. I was showing like uh, two minute clips mm-hmm. of me just doing stuff every day. Mm-hmm. But it was scripted out, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was just uh, getting these actors, to, actors together was. Kind of problem, yeah, man. That's, yeah, yeah. These man, you know, you yeah. might write somebody in a scene that they end up moving. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, I, I gotta write somebody else in here. Mm-hmm. Or you gotta work around these people's schedules, man. Yeah. That'd be that'd be a lot too, man. You know, you know, you know, one thing that happened, man. Like I had a lot of personnel issues, and that's what actually caused for mm-hmm. me to not finish that show right. in time. Because mm-hmm. it was just different things going on with cast members as mm-hmm. well as like. It was just a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, like I said, all this stuff, it was a big headache. Mm-hmm. But as far as, like you say, stuff like people moving, one thing that was kind of funny, I had one cast member, she um, lost a lot of weight, like a considerable right. amount of weight. And so, <laughs> I see what's going She told me, she was like, oh, if we start back filming, I ain't mm-hmm. gonna look the same. I was like, what you mean? Man, she yeah. sent me a picture. I was like, whoa. Oh, that ain't gonna bleed. That's in. a whole different yeah, character. Yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. But, Luckily, like I say, we mm-hmm. we, we through with that. I, I, ain't, I ain't messing with it no more. But it's a good series. Y'all mm-hmm. check it out. It's on Facebook, Brink TV Facebook page. It's called Not So Normal. Like mm-hmm. I say, it's about four episodes up. Right. And I'm going to upload the fifth and final episode soon. So, like I say, y'all want to check it out, check it out. You know, say that, man. Hey, man, just giving you a free game, man. So, we, we got to give out some free game before we leave here, man. What, what game you got for the folks today, man? Um, I hate to sound so recycled, man. And when I say this, I said it on another interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to my guy, Straight To It Podcast. You know, mm-hmm. um, one one of the nuggets that I gave on this show, and I'm going to give it tonight because this is something I always like to leave people with. Um, when you really aspiring to do something and you giving it your all, and like at any point of your career, someone tells you no, don't just take no for an answer. Like mm-hmm. really be aggressive about it. Like, Find out why not. You know what I'm saying? Ask them why not, man. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, ask them, well, what can we do? What can I do? If I can't do this, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And just really be persistent. Like, be aggressive. That's something I had to learn in this business because I thought that when you're aggressive, mm-hmm. they don't like that. Right. But what I learned is the assholes is the ones who they listen to. Right. And they pay attention mm-hmm. to. And like, I, this man ain't hungry. Yeah, I mm-hmm. was in... um. Essence Essence Festival in mm-hmm. uh, New Orleans is media. And, you know, they had a lot of the big dogs there. You right. know, like BT and right. Revolt and, you know, so on and so forth. I'm just a little bit of old Bring TV from South Memphis. They right. don't know me like that. Mm-hmm. But I made it my business that they knew who I was mm-hmm. by the end of that because they, like, it's crazy. And I'm not throwing no shade to Essence or whatever, but 
the bigger platforms, they had mm. booths mm-hmm. to conduct interviews in. Like, they right. had their own booth. Exactly, yeah. And smaller platforms like myself, they was like, oh, well, you just got to negotiate and ask, you mm-hmm. know, if they'll let you use their booth. And right. I'm thinking in my head, bro, BET ain't finna let little old <laughs> me use that booth. Right. So, what yeah. I did, I went for mine. Mm-hmm. I looked, BET, mm-hmm. big name. I looked, revoked. Big name. Right. Then I saw another name right next to that. It was called Aspire TV. Mm-hmm. I had never heard of it. Right. So I thought about it. I said, if I go up in this booth, ain't nobody in there at, mm-hmm. at the time. If I go up in this booth and set up shop mm-hmm. and do bring TV, would the guests be mad to find out that it's not Aspire TV? Mm-hmm. Who really knows what Aspire TV <laughs> is? And I'm right. not trying to shade them. I'm just mm-hmm. being honest. See, they'd be pissed off if I went in the BET booth. Right, and said, right, Wait a minute, right. This ain't BET. Yeah, Hell no, you're right. Going. You're right. You're right. Wait a minute, this ain't Revolt. I ain't exactly. No. I see what you said. But Inspire TV. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, you guys are Inspire TV. I was like, no, it's Spring TV. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, hey, we got such and such. Yes. You want to enter room? Yeah, send them in. Okay. And okay. That's what I did. Say that because, like I say, you're not finna sit up here and tell me no, you can't, mm-hmm. or no, you got to go talk to them. I'm not talking. I didn't talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. I just set up shop and I said they're gonna have to tell me to move. Right. Nobody ever came, made me move. They peeped their head in, went on about their business. Mm-hmm. So it's like, don't let nobody tell you no and let it be the end all be all. Like be aggressive, be a shark. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's exactly. so many amphibians in the water right now. Mm-hmm. But the top dog is that shark. Yeah, damn right. Shark, he eating everything that get in his way that tell him nah. So you got to be that way. So that's mm-hmm. my free game, man. Be aggressive. You know, don't be no guppy. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be no little goldfish. Like, be a shark. Like, mm-hmm. swim through these waters like you know these waters, like you own these waters. Like, you know, who's finna stop you? Who's finna stop that great white? Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, I know, obviously, the military probably is right. <laughs> what I'm saying is... Any Go for other, yours. Any other yeah. aquatic amphibian ain't finna stop you. So, mm. hey, be the shark. Exactly, man. I got a little game I want to give out today. Y'all know I got to give it to y'all raw. I be having this problem here, too. Stop trying to fuck with niggas that don't fuck with you. Mm. Stop calling niggas that don't really fuck with you, man. Niggas don't... Some of these niggas don't even fuck with you, man. So, stop. stop just stop fucking with them. Yeah. Don't let their relationship just die down. Go on, let that relationship go. I know it's hard trying to, you know, fuck with females. You know, be trying to fuck with dudes, they, they exes and shit still. Dudes be still trying to fuck with these females. They, you know, they exes and stuff. They really don't want to fuck with you. Let that shit go, man. Just let it go. It's over it. You, you already know in your heart and your gut that they don't fuck with you, but you still be trying to call them or you still be trying to call him. You know what I'm saying? You already know. You feel it. Just let it go. For real, for real. It's over with, man. This year, let it go at 24 and look for more. That's it. You feel me, man? For real, for real. And that's giving out free game. Yeah.